OK, so sometimes when you collect data, there are extreme values uh, that are either very large or very small that would be deemed quite unlikely to occur. Now, actually figuring out which of those data points are outside of what you would consider to be a, a reasonable degree. Um, there are a couple of different ways of doing it. Um, the first way that we're going to look at in this video are, is using the quartiles, and the second method is using the mean of standard deviation, which we'll use in the second video. Um, now for the quartiles, um, the way that it is calculated to determine if a data item is an outlier or not is by looking at the range of values between the lower quartile take away some multiple of the interquartile range. Now, this is a totally arbitrary figure that is used. And in some circumstances, you may be told to use a different value. But in the majority of cases, we use 1.5 times the interquartile range. OK? So you do the lower quartile, take away 1.5 times the interquartile range. And the upper bound is the upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Now, you might be asking, well, why 1.5? Why not 1.48? OK, 1.5, as I said, is an arbitrary figure that is used. Um, and it has been shown to give good results. That's why 1.5 is the most often used. You could always use 1. And a question could ask you to use 1, um, or 2, for that matter. But you just need to go with the question. Now, anything that is outside of this, so either larger than the upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, or smaller than the lower quartile take away 1.5 times the interquartile range, are considered outliers. Now, this doesn't mean that the data items that are there have been recorded incorrectly. They could well be uh, perfectly reasonable, okay, but are still considered extreme values. Um, if they had been recorded incorrectly, and we'll go on to have a look at this in a couple of videos' time, then we would refer to them as anomalies. Um, in which case, um, if we don't believe that they have been uh, recorded correctly, we may have to omit them. Or we might have reason to omit them from our uh, statistics. So I'm going to try and work out if there are any outliers for these two sets of data. So the first set is a discrete set of data. Um, and the second set is a grouped continuous set of data. OK? Right, so the first set, what I need is the lower quartile, upper quartile, and interquartile range. OK? So I've got uh, six bits of data. So the median would be in there. So that means that 15 is the lower quartile. And the upper quartile is the 45. So the interquartile range is equal to 45, take away 15, and so 30. So if I do the lower quartile, so 15, take away 1.5 times the interquartile range, then I get minus 30. And if I do the upper quartile, 45, plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, I get 90. So what that means is that anything that is less than minus 30 or anything that is greater than 90 is an outlier, is considered an outlier. And so in our case, we've got one outlier, which is 95. So this would be considered an outlier. Now, as I said, it doesn't mean that it's been recorded incorrectly. Maybe perfectly reasonable, but it's considered an outlier in the set. Right, let's have a look at this one. OK, so I'm going to need to work out the lower quartile and upper quartile. I'm going to have to use linear interpolation in order to do it. So I'm going to work out a cumulative frequency as well. 
Okay, so I've got 2, 9, 29, 40. So I've got 40 bits of data. So the lower quartile will appear one quarter of the way along, so at 10. So the tenth value will be in this grouping here, 70 to 80. So somewhere between 70 to 80 is the tenth value. Now by the time I get to 70, I've gone through nine data points. And by the time I get through to 80, I've gone through 29 data points. So the lower quartile, this value here, can be found by writing in this equation. So lower quartile takes 70 over 80 take away 70. So the ratio of that distance to that distance is equal to the ratio of that distance to that distance. OK. So I've got um, 10 take away 9 over 29 take away 9, so 1 20th. Multiply up by the 10, and then add the 70 to both sides. So I get 70.5 as the lower quartile. Now, as for the upper quartile, I've got 40 data items, so the upper quartile will appear 3 quarters of the way through, so at 30. Now 30 will appear in this grouping here between 80 and 100. So the upper quartile somewhere in here, the 30th position. I've gone through 29 uh, spots to get to 80, and 40 by the time I get to the end of the group. So that means that the upper quartile, take away 80, over 100 take away 80 is equal to 30 take away 29 over 40 take away 29. So we're going to have uh, 1 over uh, 11. So 1 11th on that right hand side. Uh, multiply up by the 20 and then add 80 to both sides. So I get 900 over 11, which is 81.8 to 3 sig fig. OK, so that's my upper quartile. So now my range of values is the lower quartile, 70.5, take away 1.5 times the interquartile range. Now the interquartile range is going to be 900 over 11, take away 70.5. So 249 over 22. I'm going to use the exact fractions here. So lower bound, lower quartile, 70.5, take away 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that gets me 2,355 over 44, so 53.5 to 3 sig fig. And then I've got the upper quartile, so 900 over 11, plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And that gets me 4,347 over 44, or 98.8 to 3 sig fig. OK, so they are my boundaries. Now, are there any outliers? Well, we definitely, definitely have two outliers in this group because I know that there are definitely two items between 0 and 50. So there are definitely two there. I could have more than two that are less than 53.5, because I know that there are seven data items between 50 and 70, but because I don't know what the original data was, I can't be sure as to where they're positioned in that grouping. They may, those seven bits of data may be larger than 53.5, okay, but less than 70. I don't know. So there could be more than two that are less than that value. But there's definitely at least two. As for the upper bound, 
Well, the upper bound of that grouping is 100. I know that there are 11 bits of data between 80 and 100. One of them, or more, could be larger than 98.8, .8, but I don't know. So there could be outliers that are larger than that figure, and there could be more than two that are smaller than that figure. But all I can say for definite is that there are at least two outliers, given the fact that two are appearing between 0 and 50.